Howdy folks, little John, eh, <laughs> somewhere different today, I'm in the office, ah, uh, <laughs> reason being, it's too cold everywhere else to sit down and have a beer, and I'm going to sit down today, um, and I'm going to have a, a beer or two, I'm going to uh, do a review on the Cooper's Vintage, this is the 2020 release I picked up yesterday, um, I did mention last night on Facebook to somebody um, when they asked if I was going to do a review that uh, that I wouldn't be doing a review on the vintage ale and I normally don't. Uh, I normally wouldn't think about it. I just I normally I drink it. That's about it. Uh, but soon I'm actually been doing the <laughs> the reviewing videos. To, um, a bit more late lately. I uh, decided why not. Um, so while I'm at it, I've discovered when putting the new brews in the fridge. Uh, but I've still got a full six pack from the 2019 last year. So obviously I didn't crack one of these at all, because I only buy a six pack. Um, I don't know. I do have a funny thing, I, might have, I may have bought a loose bottle, because that's all the local IGA I had initially, and then a while later they got some more in and I got a six pack. Because it doesn't make any sense that I wouldn't have tried it at some stage early on. But anyway, so, you know what I said. It's too cold pretty much anywhere else. As I mentioned on other videos, air conditioners packed it in, we've got no heating, we're running just a couple little fan heaters here and there, so I've had one running here in the office. Uh, it's 6 degrees outside, it's 12 degrees in the in the brew cave. Uh, I've got a um, UJSSM uh, currently stripping out there, uh, I'm ducking in and out, but I don't want to sit out, practically want to sit out there and have a beer. And everywhere else in the house is not much better. So, the office it is. So, while I'm pouring this, shout out as always to the Patreons. Cheers guys for your support. It's much appreciated. Uh, if you're not sure about the Patreon, jump in the link down the bottom. Have a look, see what it's all about. If you're new to the channel, you haven't subscribed to Little John, hit the button down the corner. So, this is a Cooper's Cooper's Brewery 2020 Vintage Ale. Uh, just bought a nice solar head. It's filled out beautifully into my uh, craft glasses here. Now, yeah, there's a date on here, 13th for the 7th, 20, so I'm assuming that's going to be when she was bottled. So, Given that this is a beer that's designed to be cellared and stored, um, one's not going to expect it to be particularly at its best this young. Uh, though plenty of people yeah, drink the vintage just as it is and don't, don't actually age it. Um, it's a, I like to age it and crack a bottle every, you know, about every year and just see how they progress and change and when there's little nuances each year between one batch and another there's not a lot of nose on this and it's generally a quite malt forward sort of a brew obviously I mean anything that's designed for for selling is going to needs to be malt forward Yeah, and it's a, a little bit to be expected at this age. Uh, it's a little messy. The hops are there at the moment, but there, there's some grassy, grassy note, both on the nose and on the tongue. It's a 7.5% beer, so it's got some, got some depth, so it does take a bit of hops to balance up you know, that malt. And I 
yeah, definitely at the moment, this is way too, it's way too green. Uh, you, you normally get that, um, you know, people are used to seeing it on the Coopers, you know, best after. Okay, well, it actually says on here, so best after sea bottle. So that date must be a best after. So that's a good three weeks gone by. But I've still got a, I've still got a hazard that that is not anywhere near the intended feel of this brew. It's probably a little bit, bo little, little bit lighter in the body than they normally are, and not quite as much. The, the malt's not quite as deep. Yeah, and I'm definitely not liking what the hops are doing in this at the moment. I certainly hope that's going to develop and mellow and settle with some time. Uh, I, said, I think that certainly falls into that category of, you know, I've discussed it many, many times before, hops being young and they just haven't developed their flavour. They're just vegetative and grassy. <coughs> And that's where that beer is sitting right now. So, as it is, it's not a particularly enjoyable beer. So, um, and maybe she'll age better. And anyway, let's not dwell on what could be better and move on to last year's. So, the only difference between this bottle and last year's bottle is says 2019. Well, she might have been going to try and have a little bit of a gush, but she hasn't. She's uh, going to show up. The neck of the bottle there is filled with filled with foam, but that's about it. Oh, oh, what a phone call! Probably a bloody telling Martha. Come to tell you, most people want to ring me on the mobile. We'll just let that ring out. So, this had a best after 27th of June 2019. And she poured a bit less head than this year's. Uh, there seemed to be a little, little bit less gas in the bottle than there was in the 2020, yet it seems to be a little bit more, uh, not a lot. You can't really see it there. Uh, there's just a nice little swirl in there of the bit of yeast that's come off the bottom of the bottle. Um, this, I mean, it's only over a little bit. Okay, it's got that the typical nose that the uh, the vintage ale picks up over time. It's a little. It's pushing the edges of medicinal and astringent and almost chemically. Uh, and I come in uh, with different discussions with people over time. The Divinity Jail tends to pick up some sherry, you know, some sherry port notes. Uh, which can become, which do have an astringency in them, and they do border on, yeah, that sharp bite that you can, you can get with, say, uh, a beer that's maybe uh, picked up a little bit of an infection or it's got, you know, that medicinal bite. But it doesn't quite push that edge. It's sort of, uh, 
that treads the line and it, likes, it tends to want to just stay on the right side of that line and those flavours where it doesn't tip into that side where it becomes an unpleasant experience it just stays where it's an interesting character on the edges without becoming you know, overpowering and unmo and unnice so that's the beauty now with the, the, the hops that having minimal minimal effect you can still pick them up but not as a clear thing it's starting to develop a little bit of its you know that wine porty sherry note But it's very, the underlying flavour, as always, it's very similar. This year's, you know. You take that bit of grassy hop out of that, and they're essentially very much the same beer. Uh, which is a little bit... Different. Something you, you often you'll find from year to year that the flavours are a bit different, but that's a fairly consistent sort of a profile from the 2020s of the 2019. Still not a massive fan of of that either. Um, Overall, my impression, generally on the vintage ale, it's been a, it's a little bit of a, it's a bit of marketing, it's a bit of a gimmick. Um, I never really thought it had the depth of quality and the character that yeah, it really should have with what it's claiming to be. Um, it's different. It's not. I mean, it, it's not the kind of beer you can just go out and buy anywhere. Uh, it is. It is different from that perspective. Uh, You're not just walking down to any brewery and picking up a similar sort of beer. It sort of fits into its. It does fit into its own little, own little niche. And the, clearly, that's what they're going for. Um, and they, and they fit it in there. Uh, but as I say, it's. For me, it's not a great, it's not a fantastic beer, it's not a great beer. Um, there's a little bit of, oh, there's a touch of wankerism in it. Um, and probably started before like wankerism was a, like was really taking a part in the craft beer world. Uh, and, and I was stepping into that, just something a little bit outside. Um, but overall for me, yeah, I think it really, doesn't stand up to the hype and the, the legend that is, you know, Cooper's Vintage Ale. Uh, to some degree, for me, it's just a, it's just a strong ale that they brew bloody, you know, randomly, um, and just keeps the Cooper's brand on the edge of people's mind and the beer periphery. Uh, probably far less now than what would have been, say, five, six years ago before craft beer really kicked off again. Um, well, again, well, before it really kicked off, when um, this sort of thing was different and it, was, and it was it stood out. Uh, it's lost its impetus and its, you know, its importance in the whole in the whole beer picture. I said, I've had a 2014, I think it was a 2014, about two weeks ago, um, I'll have the barbie, and same thing, you drink it, um, because it's there, because of what it is, uh, but it doesn't drive you to want to, you're not driven to want to drink it, 
And I said, I've got... Well, there's a dozen, probably a dozen bottles of various years in the fridge. They just sit there and they, you know, from year to year, they roll over from year to year. I go, uh, I've got back to 20, I think 2012. I think it's the oldest bottle I've got sitting there at the moment. But I don't open the fridge and never sort of go, oh, yeah, let's have a vintage ale. I've got to really push myself to have one. Um, which to me, which really screams to me that it's, you know, you're not enjoying it that much. So, that flows on everything else. But, that being said, take take that with a grain of salt. Because this beer and what it represents and what it stands for is different to everybody. Um, and there's going to be drinkers that are going to you know, really enjoy it. They're going to really enjoy it young. They're going to really enjoy it as it ages. Uh, there's others that, yeah, are going to relish in the winkery that is the vintage ale. Um, now it says on here this is the 20th release of the vintage ale, 2020, and it says in the box it says 2020. Um, 20 of release, 20, yeah, into 2020. Uh, now I'm pretty sure I've seen people talk about what they've had bottles like 1996. So I don't, don't, don't know whether this was something they did not every year initially for a while, and it took a while before it became a, a yearly thing. Um, may have been every second year or something for a while uh, before it sort of took off as a, you know, the marketed product. I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, but maybe someone can comment on that. Maybe no, someone knows a bit more about the, the history of the vintage ale. I'm not going to go looking into it. But I'm going to wrap this up. Um, so right now, for me, the 2020 is exactly what you expect to get from a Cooper's vintage ale. Um, for me, that's that's not a beer. That's not a winning beer. It's yeah, it's just something to talk about. So, make up your own decision. Rush out and get some if you have to. If you don't, if you're not worrying about it, yeah, no, it's not going to hurt you. It's not going to kill you. You're not, you're not particularly missing anything. So, little John, I'm done for the day. As always, subscribers, cheers for subscribing. Hit the button down in the corner if you aren't subscribed. Patreons, cheers guys. Thank you for your support. Link down the bottom if you're interested in uh, finding out what Patreon's all about. Questions and comments, same thing. Stick it down the bottom, ask away, comment away, no problem at all. But other than that, little John, I'm done. Cooper's 2020 Vintage Ale, review done. So till I see you again, cheers.